Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna not do physics, we're gonna do a nice geometry problem and look at the area of overlap between two rectangles. So I have two identical rectangles. Uh, the short side of each rectangle, I'm gonna call it A, and the long side of the rectangle, I'm gonna give it a letter B, and that's gonna be a length. Uh, for example, A could be equal to two, B could be equal to three. Um, there are two values and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate one relative to the other as shown in the figure over here And my goal here is to calculate if their vertices are connected as shown over here um, What is the area of overlap between both of these rectangles? So that's kind of this gray blue shaded area. How do I evaluate what the area of this? Uh, surface is so let's go ahead set up this problem and I'll show you how to solve this so what I first want to do to solve this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some other distances. Remember the length here from D to E is simply the letter B, and later on I'm going to evaluate that for this specific case where B equals to 3, but clearly this distance over here I know. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on this particular uh, part over here, up above, and my goal really is to find what is this distance, right? If I can find really what this distance is, that means I would automatically know what the distance right next to it is, right? Because you know that both of these have to sum up to give you B. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna evaluate some distances. So I'm gonna call this X, and just to give it a variable here, I'm gonna call this distance Y. Now, if you kind of use the symmetry of the problem over here, you should be able to convince yourself that if that was x, this here must also be x, <laughs> right? It has to be x. And if you're not sure about that, spend a couple minutes just to ensure that you realize that distance. Now, if the short side of the rectangle here, I've labeled it as a, that means that this is also the short side because these are identical rectangles. So I'm gonna call that a. And now what I wanna do is I wanna focus on this little right angle triangle over here, and I can use Pythagorean theorem here in order to write an expression for that. So that's what we're gonna do here. So you have to have that a squared uh, plus x squared uh, must equal to y squared. Okay, this I must have. And the other thing I know now from here is I can also eliminate the letter Y because look at, I also know that X plus Y has to be equal to B and B is a known value. So this is gonna be equation one. This is gonna be equation two right here, that X plus Y has to be equal to the longer side of that rectangle. All right, once you've kind of established both of these relationships, what I can do now is I can substitute, I can isolate Y in equation two and then I could substitute it over here in equation one. So let's kind of do that over here. So from here, you should be able to simply write y is equal to b minus x. And then what we're going to do here is simply substitute that over here. And then all we have is one equation in terms of x and our two variables that we know, a and b. And that's gonna help us out a lot. So let's go ahead and follow this next step. So equation one and one prime here, I'm gonna call it. This is gonna be a squared plus x squared. Let's not kind of work on this left-hand side for a second. And over here, what I'm doing, I'm simply doing b minus x and squared. What I wanna do now is work on this right-hand side. And here, you're just expanding this quadratic over here. So this is b squared minus two times uh, bx and plus x squared. And this here must be equal to a squared plus x squared. Do a little bit of algebra here just to eliminate the x squared terms. And at the end, the only unknown in this equation now is x. So all I have to do now is simply isolate that variable. And what you end up getting here is that x equals to b squared minus a squared uh, over 2b. So this is our first equation. This one is really important. And it expresses the value x, this distance over here, in terms of the known quantities a and b. What you want to do now is you want to substitute that back over here and let's do and let's get an expression for our value y all right so let's go ahead and simply substitute it in there so what you get here is b minus open up a big bracket we get b squared minus a squared again over 2b and now all you do is you simply put things on a common denominator our common denominator for this case is 2b and that means this guy here becomes 2b squared and again, now you just distribute that negative sign through, and you notice you swap the sign here of that a squared term. 
Uh, here you have 2b squared minus b squared, uh, which means you're simply going to be left with 1b squared. All right, so our final equation here, at least for y, simply becomes uh, b squared plus a squared. And again, over 2b, here's our second really important equation that we're going to use to solve for the area of that overlap region. Let's go to the next page and finish this problem. So to find the area of this overlap region, what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to apply a formula for a trapezoid or a parallelogram, right? Uh, if we have a parallelogram here and we have a length y, which I've denoted here by the purple uh, distances over here, and the angle theta here I've denoted as this angle over here, um, you can write the area. Oops, that's a little bit too big. Uh, you can write the uh, area, let me just write it out like this, can simply be equal to one side, which is y, in this case multiplied by the other side, which is also y, and multiplied by sine of the angle between uh, both of those, right? And it doesn't matter whether you define this uh, angle as the angle theta or uh, the other angle over here is the angle theta. Um, you're going to get the same answer. All right, so what we have to do now is try to evaluate what is this sine of the angle theta function. So here I've got my original rectangle, and here it's defined inside this parallelogram, but it also has to be this angle, right, because of this z rule. So now sine of the angle theta, you should be able to automatically see that sine of the angle theta, I should be able to write as the opposite, which is a divided by y. So now if you substitute everything in here, you have y multiplied by y multiplied by sine of theta, which is a over y. You can see that one of those y terms cancels out. <laughs> and what we're left with here is our final expression for the area, which is simply y multiplied by a. We can go ahead now and just substitute our expression for y, which I've written up here again, which we previously found, b squared plus a squared over 2b. There's not really anything I can simplify here. So that is really the final expression for the area. But what you can do now is let's evaluate it for this specific term over here. So what we would find here is that the area, let's get a numerical value. So we would have two for a, here I would have three squared plus two squared and over two multiplied by three. All right, you can simplify some things. I have a two in the numerator, one in the denominator, nothing really no other steps I can do to simplify this. Let's just evaluate the terms here. So this is 9 plus 4. Uh, 13 over 3 gives me this area of overlap. In method 2, uh, let's go have a look at another way to calculate this area really quickly. All right, so for method 2, what I'm going to do is a more direct method here. What I'm simply going to write here is the area. What I've noticed here, I've created some dashed lines over here. And basically what all I want to do here is simply sum up the area of this, right? The overlap here is composed of uh, one triangle over here, uh, one rectangle, which is kind of denoted by these dashed lines and uh, these two lengths, and then also another triangle, call that three. So if I'm able to simply find the area of everything, one plus region two plus region three, I've solved the problem. And I know pretty much everything about this. So let's go ahead and do this. So we have first a triangle up here. Uh, the area of that triangle is simply base times height over 2. So what's the base? The base is this. That's a distance a uh, multiplied by the height. The height is x and divided by 2. <laughs> Plus uh, region 2, we'll come back to it in a minute. Region 3 is going to be identical to region 1, right? It's the exact same triangle. So it's also going to be AX over 2. So region 2 now is simply a rectangle. And the rectangle here is going to have a width, which is denoted by A. And now what is the height? Now you have to think about this one for a minute. This one's not as clear. So let me go ahead and draw it here. So remember, this is the height. All right? I know that this side here has a length A. So the question is, what is this distance here that I need for evaluating the area of region 2? Well, I know the total distance here is b, and I know each one of these guys here is x. All right, so that means that this guy over here has to be b minus 2x, right? Because this whole distance, that rectangle had a length of b. So that's all you have to do, right? This is b minus 2x. 
Okay, so now we have to simply do a little bit of algebra. Let's combine the first term and the last term. Um, that simply is a times x, right? I have 1 half plus 1 half. And then plus this term over here. This is going to be a, b. I'm going to distribute through uh, by this multiplication here. And minus 2 ax. All right, just about done. Uh, what do we have now? We have uh, a, b. And here I have ax and minus 2ax. So I'm left with minus ax. And here I can factor out a and a. And I'm left with b minus x. All right, we can go ahead and uh, do one more thing. b minus x, if you remember what that is, b minus x was really the definition here of y. Right, if you remember from a couple pages ago, this whole distance was b. So that means that this was b minus x. So now we simply go back, and we write this as a multiplied by y, and this is the exact same expression I just had on the previous page. Uh, we can go ahead and, and substitute here. Uh, what we're gonna find here is also uh, 13 over three.